Hi everyone, so today I wanted to go through the results of YCS Lima and uh, what that means for the matter. Going into the 250th um, YCSs. So we had, um, so I'm going to bring up the uh, Septo, the famous Septo spreadsheet here. Oh, hold on, let me try. There it is. Um, so yeah, so we got Adventure Sprite coming in first and second, Adventure Sprite Mirror in the final. We've only been given the uh, <clears throat> the list from the second place list, but I would assume that there's not that much more different you can do. Um, I'm going to assume everyone's seen these lists. If you don't, you can look at the famous uh, Sp Septal spreadsheet. You can find them on Twitter. Um, but yeah, so we got a uh, double adventure sprite top two, uh, Kashira salad top four. And then we got Plunder, Labyrinth, Naturia, and Flunder. And then we got some other stuff. So we got some, you know, some Eldritch. Doesn't really count. We're not gonna, we're not gonna speak about that. Uh, we got Marincess. Uh, not, not bad deck, but folds to a Kaiju, which are currently being played, so you can't really play that. Dragon Link, pretty surprising. Pretty surprising. I'll have a um, quick chat about that. Um, Tia Shizu. Again, very surprised. We'll have a chat about that. So we will switch back over to DB. So Adventure Sprite, the winning list. Personally, I cannot see how this works. Um, I've tried it. It's decent with Elf, but the deck doesn't have Elf, so it's not very good. I'm not really sure what they were playing at as well with a 50 card deck. Um, there's just so many cards. I, I really don't. Don't rate it at all. I'm not really sure how it won. The thing you've got to take into account with these these bigger YCS, or sorry, these um, South American YCS, Central American YCS, is that they're not very large. Uh, the only this one had like 600 players. For example, uh, UK Nats had um, had more players than that, and Drytron ended up winning. Not that I'm saying it was a bad deck, but I'm just saying like you know these random events can occur at the smaller. Uh, manned events and obviously with the South America player base um, probably got um, stock issues like um, probably got the supply chain issues that Brazil has as well being that they're not too far away from each other's on like the next country or two so I don't know if the meta game's a little bit behind there but obviously there was the American players that went over and you know, Jesse Cotton got top 16, uh, Christian Urena, I think as well, got top 16, Raph Nevin went over from uh, the Netherlands, and he also got top 16 as well, so, you know, it was a good couple of players there, but I think, uh, like Kastira and Jesse Cotton were saying, I mean, we'll get we'll get on to it, so, Adventure Spray first and second, again, not really convinced, I won't be playing that deck, I might try it, but I definitely won't be playing a 50 card build, I just don't think it's correct, and my biggest qualm with it is, you're playing a 10 card adventure engine um when you should be playing hand traps sprite's all about hand traps and the adventure engine doesn't doesn't because with sprite you need to bring the power level of that deck down to the power level of your deck and the adventure engine doesn't help you with that so that's why i don't think it works um kashira it's just the same one isn't it where you have to be very lucky to win with kashira um, you just have to be the luckiest because you're playing a room. You have to go for the lock five if you've got the lock five, and if they've got Sphere Mode, if they've got Lav Golem, if they've got a Kaiju or something, then you've got to take it on the chin. Or you can do the Arise Heart Pass where if they've got a Kaiju, you lose. So it's really, really hard to stay ahead of the matter with that deck. Um, I won't be playing it because there's just too many ridiculous outs to it. Uh, Gazelle. So obviously summoning in up the Salomon Great build. It was Adventure Salad and it had one right in it. So I don't really know what you want me to say. Uh, I believe the salad was more than just like, more just an engine. It was like that deck Schmidt was playing with the Heat Soul engine where you don't play Rage and Raw. You just, um, you just play uh, Heat Soul control basically. But then obviously using the Adventure engine, which they've got like... A seven card adventure engine because uh, they dropped two rights off it and that just cuts the hand trap so you're just going to be heat soul and into 
more adventure cards, which I know gives you an Omni negate, but it doesn't really help in their turn. If you heat all in their turn, you do, you know you know the likelihood of you drawing a hand trap is less. Um, go up against. Uh, and we'll go next to Pl Runic Plunder. Um, not really sure much about this deck. To be honest, I'm going to have to learn how to play it. I'm probably going to learn how to play it over the next couple of days. Maybe do a video on that. I think I've got um, my next one's going to be branded. But yeah. So Runic Plunder, not really sure what it does. Need to look into it. It's probably got some potential. Uh, Labyrinth. Labyrinth is Labyrinth. Uh, Skill Drain's good. Ravelry's good. Gozen's good. Um, there can only be one's good. You know, there's, there's lots of different stuff there that's really, really impactful. Um, so I'm always expecting a Labyrinth. But what was special about this Labyrinth was that there was a, there was Dragoon in it, which, to be honest, makes a lot of sense. I quite rate it. The only problem you've got is if you draw the bricks it's not a trap card if you draw the red eyes fusion and then have to use the dragoon you can be put quite far behind but i suppose you've got to hope that that's enough to to win you the game and uh, cherry runic it's a pretty good deck um consistent if you play like foolish goods because then you can up it to uh, 12 engine cards because uh, you've got the camellia the mole cricket the goods and the world tree um i'm counting the world tree as a start because you'll always have a runic card to make huge and pitch um so yeah that's a start in my eyes uh, the deck's pretty good can put up beast can put up back in uh, really powerful into matchups that rely on them uh again it's just baron turbo and uh, a card you can cause this deck a lot of harm if they don't have the right runic cards so there's that um <clears throat> flunder not really sure what the deck does at all now. Um, no barrier statue it means I'm not scared. I think they are ending on Snowl. Now, so let's have a look at what this does. Snowl. Once per turn, while you control the shoot summon card, you can conduct the three normal summon sets, not just one. Wow, it's ridiculous. A while it's shoot some cards in a monster zone and tax defense, special monster effect, battle damage. Uh, once per turn, quick effect, and you banish one card from your hand, chains all special ones your opponent controls to face on defense. That is pretty good. I think this is what they're ending on now. That's pretty good. Um, maybe some potential. I do want to see the deck um, not be a floodgate deck because if you can normal summon three times per turn, you can loop the Mega Monarch. So that's huge potential. Um, juggling, safer here. Um, I love the deck. Um, got my first regional win with Dragon Link. Um, love dragons, but I just can't buy it. I just don't think it works. Um, Seal Pass is not what it used to be. It's just um, it's just not enough. Like what are we doing? Are we we waiting for Fenrir to come in the battle phase, and then are we Seal bouncing it? If they start with the Unicorn, that's even worse um, because they just they just get the search, and then they go in the battle phase, and you have to bounce it, otherwise you lose your Seal. So unless someone comes up with some good goo for that, I, I just can't think that it's going to be anywhere um, that that's remotely playable, like to a high level. And I think it's just an anomaly that it did top. And then we've got a Shizu Tia. And speaking of anomalies, I mean, the list was as, about as consistent as you could make a Shizu Tia. But again, it's a Shizu Tia. It doesn't really do much. Um, again, not really sure how this made the top cut. But yeah, just to like sort of recap on that, um, recap on this list, what do we have? We have like 10, nine different decks and then plus the Eld Legion, you know, all the rest of it. So there's just Sprite, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 different decks. This is just so hard to prepare for for the tournament. Um, this is where I think, uh, a real sort of jack of all trades deck um is re is is going to be quite good um into into this format because the the format is just too wide it's it's impossible to prepare for everything um but what's interesting is there's no branded uh, currently in the top in the top cut which to be honest it's it's a bad deck but i thought at least one of them would have topped you know especially if Adventure Sprite was going to top, or Adventure, Adventure Sprite was going to win, or Adventure Salomon was going to top. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, 
I hope that was informative. I hope that sort of gives some opinions on what was going on. Um, and I hope you enjoyed. Cheers for watching.